Okay, so um, thanks for watching the video. Really wanted you to get started on the next unit since we weren't going to be able to go to school today. So let me give you a quick overview of the next unit and then we'll work on 5-8 primarily in this video. So in the next unit, it's basically solving triangles. Okay. All right. In 5.8, it's mostly solving the right triangles. Or all of them are right triangles and applications related to that. Then in 7.1 and in 7.2, you're solving triangles that aren't right. Solving triangles that don't have right angles. So they'll they'll talk about them being oblique triangles. Triangles. Okay. All right. So in 5-8, the triangles are always going to be triangles with a right angle in them. In 7-1 and 7-2, they're going to be triangles that maybe have a obtuse angle or maybe all the angles are acute. Okay. No right angle. Okay. This causes some real problems. Okay. You have to be aware of. So if you have a right triangle, there's things you can do. You know, you can use Sokotoa for one. You can use the Pythagorean theorem for another. It would apply. Okay. Over here, you can't use Sokotoa. And you can't use the Pythagorean theorem because you don't have a right angle. And so that's what makes it a little bit hard when you get to 7, 1, and 7, 2. Okay. All right. In 7, 1, we'll be learning about something called the law of sines. And in 7, 2, something called the law of cosines. They're basically formulas. So it's really not that bad. There's just a few tricky spots that I'll need to make you aware of, and you'll need, need to work hard to understand, okay? In 5.8, the section's really called applications of trig functions, and solving right triangles is just one of the applications, and then we'll also be doing some problems called bearing problems. This is when you have things like a boat leaves a harbor, at a bearing of north 35 degrees west, and then your job is to figure out things like how far did it go, or how long would it take, that sort of thing, okay? All right, so now let's go and take a look at section 5.8. So in the course documents, there's um, a document in there for 5-8 that you can use. All right. And I think I, I had it saying what we need to know, and it should have said what we know. Okay. So I did change that on this. Yours may still have what we need to know. All right. So uh, one of the applications of trig functions is solving right triangles. And all that means is to find all the missing sides and angles. So the lengths of the missing sides and the measures of the missing angles. Okay, so there's three angles and three sides. You'll have some of them given to you and then your job will be to find all the rest of them. So this is really what we did in 5.2. Okay, so some things that we know we can do. So in a right triangle, okay, the following apply. So the following can be done. We know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, so if you've got it a right triangle, we know that the square of the two shorter legs added up would equal the square of the longest leg. That's the Pythagorean theorem. You also, in a right triangle, know that sine is opposite, can be just opposite over hypotenuse. 
the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay. All right. Another thing the, that's in general, so those are just for right triangles right there. In general, we know the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. Okay. And then um, let me go ahead. Let me see if I can move this down a little bit. All right, and then let me go ahead and mention also that something else you have to be aware of is, you know, for the most of the problems, and this is this is a different thing, you have to understand the whole concept of like function and function notation. So you know how we typically are thinking about sine, cosine, and tangent are like functions. So this is like a function machine, okay? And the input is typically your you think of as your angle. And then you do the sine, the cosine, or the tangent of that angle, and what comes out is the value of it. Okay. All right. Well, there are cases where you have to reverse that process. So you have to go this way with it and get the angle back out. You have to start with sine of an angle equaling some value and figuring out what that angle would be. Okay. And we did do a little bit of that as well. And so I just wanted to be sure you knew about the, we have to use the sine inverse to do that. We would do the sine inverse of this. And that's going to give us the angle back out. But we have to be a little bit careful. It's a little more complicated than it sounds because this sine inverse is a function. And so what it gives you back is an angle within certain quadrants. And um, so you usually have to worry a little bit about that. But since we're dealing with angles that are in a triangle, um, this works as stated. And so we have to use that. Oops, I wanted to write, write that a little differently. So over on this side, you would have the sine inverse of whatever that value is that came out. You know, this is an angle. This is some value you get, you know, like 0.9552. And so you wind up needing to get the theta. And so you wind up entering this, and then it tells you that the angle equals, and over here you find out what your angle is, okay? This will be the angle measure. And it'll be in degrees if you are in degree mode. It'll come out in radians if you're in radian mode. Okay, so anyway, Pythagorean theorem, so Katoa, knowing that the angles in a triangle are 180 and understanding how to find the angle when you know the value of a trig function. Okay. So all of those things we wind up using in this section. Okay. So let's do a couple problems. So I just clipped a few out of the book. Um, should have written down the page number. But anyway, this is in section 5.8. So these are some of the kind of basic ones that we wind up doing where um, they give us some information about the triangle, and then our job is going to be to to go ahead and um, and find the missing pieces. Okay, so it really helps to draw the pictures. So you want to do that, and I wanted to just work through maybe the one column. So let's say let's do uh, two through twelve. Okay, just get some experience with that. All right, so. I'll go ahead and squeeze in a couple here and then we'll move to the next page. Okay. So on question number two, I've got a triangle. I'm going to just draw that triangle that they gave me above. Okay. And remember where your A, your B, and your C are. Let's label it just like that. They gave us angle A is 41.5 and little b means side B. So it'd be opposite B is 20. And then we know C is a right angle. So with just that information, they want us to find all the rest of the pieces of this. Okay. So it's good practice, by the way, to use the given information as much as possible. All right. So what I would wind up doing on this, um, I could go various routes, but I might go ahead and knock out the angle angles because I know this one's 90 and I know this one's 41.5. So we can figure out angle B by just subtracting, right? And getting the angle B. 
So we'll just do that real quick. And what would that be? 48.5. So we know that. Okay. And then we're needing to find little a and little c. So you can just pick one of those to do. Trying to write a C. Okay, in little C. All right, and so when you work to do that, um, you'll set up the trig ratios at this point. And so what I might do is, is use the 41.5, the 20, and the A, and set up a ratio that relates those. So that would be tangent, wouldn't it? Because this is opposite, and this right here is adjacent. And the trig ratio that uses those, think about your SOHCAHTOA, is tangent. So you would say the tangent of 41.5 degrees equals A over 20. And so you can see that to get A, you would multiply both sides by 20. And A would equal 20 times the tangent of 41.5 degrees. Now watch the mode, especially since we're just getting started. So it may be in radian mode from problems you did earlier. So change it to degree mode, type that in, and we get A turns out to be about 17, and let's see, did it want a certain lengths to two decimal places, angles to the nearest tenth, lengths to two decimal places. So it's going to turn out to be 17.6945, so that would be 17.69 for the little a. These were equal, okay? And then um, little b we knew, and now we gotta work on c. So as we work on the c, we can think about how, well, I've got two sides of a triangle. I can go ahead and work on getting the third one, or if you like doing the trig ratio idea, you could use adjacent over hypotenuse with the 41.5. So you have both of those routes that you could take, okay? So if you wanted to, you could do cosine of 41.5. You could do this equals 20 over the C, and then just solve that for C. So you'd multiply both sides by C. Okay, And that would give you C times the cosine of 41.5 equals 20. Then you would have to divide by the cosine of 41.5 on both sides. Okay. And then you'd find out that C equals 20 over the cosine of 41.5 degrees. And you type that in. So 20 divided by cosine. 41.5, and you wind up getting it to be about 26.70. Okay. All right, now I'll say that a lot of times, let me get these to move. I want this one on down too. All right, a lot of times instead of doing that though, people will just take the fact that you knew one side was 20, one leg was 20, you found out the other leg was 17.69, so you can square that and you can use that to find C. So a lot of times we'll just use the Pythagorean theorem and then you just type in the 20 squared plus the 17.69 squared. Okay, so C squared would be equal to about 712.9361. And so I just need to square root that. And I get that C is about 
seven zero, just like the other. So it's kind of up to you. I have had people who um, will go back and just use the, another trig ratio, but it's also okay to use the Pythagorean theorem once you know two of the sides. And that's probably kind of a more natural way to do it. Okay, I just wanted to show you both on the first one so you could make that decision. Trying to get that to move down. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go do just a couple more of these from here, and then I'm going to stop the video and ask you to finish up the rest of them, and then we'll compare our results. So I'm going to just maybe pick, um, you know, every other one or so, and then we'll go back and all of us will work on it. So, um, and then we'll see if you got the answers. Okay. All right, so let me jump down and do maybe B. I mean, six with all the Bs, okay? All right, so with number six, we had B was 23.8. So number six, we knew B was 23.8 degrees. And we knew that um, little b was 40.5. Okay. And let me get the triangle drawn in that same orientation since they gave us that picture. This was A. And I'm not really doing it to scale. I'm just drawing the picture and getting the things in there so I can tell where's the opposite and where's the adjacent. If you wanted to, you could do a better job getting it to be the right size. All right, so this is supposed to be the 23.8 degrees. And then this is 40.5. And so I need little c, okay? I need little a, and I need this angle here. All right, so we're trying to get a, b, c, and little a, little b, little c. We know c, we know b. Okay, and so it's easy to get a, might as well go ahead and do that. So 90 minus 23.8, that would be 66.2 degrees. Okay, then um, I'm going to go and just work on getting some of the sides. So I might go on and get the little a next. Okay, and there's no reason for it over the c, but if I choose to do that and I'm going to use the given angle 23.8, if I look at that, this would be adjacent to it. Okay, this would be opposite, so tangent would come into play again. So I know that the tangent of 23.8 degrees would equal 40.5 over whatever A turns out to be. Okay, so I'm going to multiply through by A, which knocks the A out. And then after that, I'm going to divide by the tangent of 23.8 degrees on both sides to get A. Okay. So type in 40.5 divided by the tangent of 23.8. Make sure you're in degrees. And you get that little a is going to be about 91.8 it was 8257, so that would be 91.83. Okay, so I'm going to go up here and put that in 91.83. That's an about. B was 40.5. Okay, so the scale of my picture makes it look like I'm I'm wrong, but really it's just my picture because see that is a bigger angle. So A should have been the longer side, right? And then to find C, we could, of course, go back and do a trig ratio. But since we know two sides, we can also just use the Pythagorean theorem. And that's what, what you'll probably want to do is just come in and use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to take the A squared plus the B squared. And that should equal the C squared. 
So I'm going to do 91.83 and square it, plus the 40.5 and square it. So squaring, there it is. Okay, and when I do that, I, I don't like to round here too much, but it, this I should have had squiggles on that. Okay, and I get 10,072.9989 is what shows up on my calculator. That's C squared, so I'm going to square root that. Do you know about bringing up your answer? Because I can choose the square root and then do second and bring up my answer and instead of having to type all that in again. And I get that C is about 100.36 if I round to two decimal places. It's supposed to be the longest side, so if something doesn't seem right, you check on it. So like when I was looking at the picture, A looked like it was shorter, but that's just because I didn't bother trying to make my picture represent angle B properly. Angle B is the shortest. It should have the shortest side. Angle A is bigger, so it should be longer than B. And then C is the longest. Okay. All right, so, so far you should say, well, this is just what we were doing. It's just that they want you to find all the missing pieces, okay? All right, now let's do one that'll feel just a little bit different because they're going to give you sides. So let's do one like, um, let me do eight. Okay, so on problem number eight, we have our triangle. And I mainly use my triangle just to get my opposite, adjacent, and all that straight. So I don't usually bother making it drawn to scale. And so I've got that on 8, I have little a is 11.2. And then I have little c is 65.8. And then we got to find everything else. So see how we don't have any of the angles except c, except knowing that it's a right triangle? And then this time what we know are a couple of the sides. So we know little a is 11.2 and we know c is 65.8. All right, so you can kind of organize it how you want. I would probably get b first. Okay. I need more space again. Eight. So I would probably get B first. So to find B, I'm going to think that 11.2 squared plus B squared should equal my C squared. So B squared is going to equal the 65.8 squared minus the 11.2 squared. Right? And then you'll just square root that to get your B. So 65.8 squared minus 11.2 squared that turns out to be 4,204.2. And so when I square root that, B is going to turn out to be about 64. And they wanted two decimal places, so that would be 0.84 since it was 839. Okay, so B would be 64.84, okay? All right, now, I can go ahead and put that on here, but it's bad practice to use the 64.84. Like, don't do trig ratios that involve the 64.84. You should really focus when you do your trig ratios on using the given sides, okay? That minimizes error as a result of rounding, okay? So what you do is just pick one. I might pick this guy here. I'm going to find A, all right? So to get A, do you see how 11.2 is opposite it and 65.8 is the hypotenuse? So I think about, okay, well, that would be sine then. So I'm going to do sine of A equals... 11.2 over 65.8. All right, so I'm going to do that on my calculator. Okay, and I'm going to get about 0 0.1702. Okay, and I, I usually keep about four decimal places when I do this part. Okay, 
You can keep even more. You can hang on to the whole thing on your calculator screen, okay, if you want. So that's where I am right now. See, here we have a situation where we have to undo this and get the angle back out. So this is where you should come in and do sine inverse of that value. And if you can, just leave that whole value so you're not really rounding as much as I did. Leave all that on your calculator and just do second function sine to get your sine inverse and then bring up the answer you had before, which would be not just 0 0.1702, but everything. Then it's, it's going to have less round off errors. And so A turns out to be about 9, and they said to round angles to one decimal place. So that would be 9.8 degrees. Okay. And A was the shortest side, so I was expecting it to be a small angle. Okay. All right. Now, once you find one of the, the angles, then you're ready just to subtract that from 90 to get the other one. So the other one will be much quicker. And I get 80.2 degrees. Okay. And see how B is, is, is pretty long. It's close to C. So that's why those are so close. And we're done. Okay. All right, so I think you get the idea, and what I think you should do, I'm going to stop the video, and I want you to finish um, the problems that I didn't do over there on that right column. So if you would, go back, and let's make sure we've completed 2 through 12. So I did, I did number 2, number 6, and number 8. So go back and do 4, 10, and 12, and I'm going to do them as well. And we'll just compare answers on 4, 10, and 12. Make sure we're all in agreement. And then we'll go on and do some of these other, other problems. Okay, so finish 4, 10, and 12.